Welcome to module one. I had a great time getting to know everybody on the discussion boards. The readings this week cover the basics of open data and provide a look at one of the leaders in the open data movement in ecology and what she thinks about the future of science and open data. So I hope you enjoyed the podcast. It's a different way of learning and I like it because you can listen to it while you're driving or washing the dishes. Our course is designed around open data and we'll be using publicly available data from the National Ecological um, Observatory Network, or NEON for short. NEON is funded by the National Science Foundation for the next 30 years. And the goal of NEON is to provide the public, so scientists like us, teachers, students, governmental, nonprofit organizations, the public, everybody, with long-term data to understand how ecosystems in the United States are changing. NEON samples plants, animals, soils, freshwater systems, atmospheric conditions from 81 sites that include both terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems across the US, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. They are also a good resource for data tutorials, code uh, that we'll use in this course, and they also have a lot of job and career opportunities, uh, so seasonal fieldwork and research internships. So at the end of this course, I'll show you how to include our coursework um, that uses these NEON tutorials and these carpentry tutorials to uh, include them on your resume. So when you're applying for positions in ecology, these are recognizable resources. And having completed these exercises really uh, strengthens your, your application. We have three goals for this week's assignment. First, we need to get to know NEON. Um, second, I want us to explore NEON data. And third, I want us to start thinking about the data set that you want to work on this semester. So first, let's spend time exploring their website. You should do this on your own. Check out those opportunities. Maybe this is something you're interested in applying for for next summer. Check out their about page. Right? I look at these uh, resources that are available, teaching modules. Maybe you have a sibling who is a science teacher and you can tell them about this resource that you learned about. Or maybe you have a friend who is looking for a field experience and you can send them this page. All right, so our second goal is to explore NEON data. And the screencast is meant to walk you through this process because there may be a lot that is new to you or that you don't recognize. Don't worry, that's perfectly normal. That is why you are in the course. Let's start looking at the types of NEON data by selecting the data menu. The types of questions we will ask in the course will be best using the organisms, populations, and communities. So we want to select this option in the drop-down menu that appears from the data menu under data themes, organisms, populations, and communities. So I'm going to select that option. Um, so you can scroll down and see a list of the organisms that are sampled by NEON. So these include things from uh, you know, microbes to plants, small mammals, fish in aquatic ecosystems, mosquitoes and ticks. So think about what, you know, what about these piques your interest and then um, we'll go from there. So for example, if you're interested in human diseases like malaria or dengue or Lyme disease, you may want to work with the mosquito or tick data 
But if you prefer more charismatic fauna, you might want to pick the small mammals, the plants or birds. So scroll down and read you know, the relevance of these organisms and the research applications because this will help us brainstorm the types of questions that we'll be able to ask once we've downloaded, identified and downloaded a data set. But today we're just, we're identifying what we're interested in. Okay, so you've picked a type of organism. Now let's look at where NEON sites are located by selecting the field sites menu from the top bar. So we're, we're going to select this top menu and it'll take us to this page where we can scroll down and look at this map. I really, I prefer this map over a few others that are available because it's, it's easy to understand and kind of see where the, the sites are. The blue dots are aquatic field sites. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit for you all. And the green sites are terrestrial field sites. And we'll only be working with the core sites, so you can ignore, ignore these light blue and light green. So pick a site that you are most interested in and, you know, it's hard to see where exactly these sites are. So to do that, we need to look at the site list in more detail. Let's scroll up. And instead of clicking the main field sites tab, we're going to navigate to the field sites map option and the field site list under that option. I'm going to select this to see a detailed list of all the field sites. So we see the state that it's located, the site name, whether it's a terrestrial or aquatic, and what's great is that we can filter by certain things. So we're going to ignore the relocatable sites. We can unselect those options. And I'm a terrestrial ecologist, so I'm going to unselect the core aquatic site as well and focus on the, the core terrestrial sites. I'm also interested in, um, you know, you can see what domains. So domains, domains are regions that share ecological and climatological conditions. For example, a, you know, where nearby the Appalachian and Cumberland Plateau, um, there's other domains as well. And if we're interested in those, how do I get these out? If we're interested in learning more about those domains, right at the top, there are 20 eco-climatic domains. We can select that to look at these uh, different regions, right? So Richmond is located in a mid, the mid-Atlantic domain. And you can see the other domains, Great Basin, Southern Plains, kind of a nice map overview. All right, but I want to continue with my filtering, so I'm going to navigate back. And I don't know if that refreshes, it does. So it refreshes the options that you selected. So now I have to unselect the sites again and more filter options. Let's say I'm interested in the region around Richmond. So that was mid Atlantic domain. I'm going to select mid Atlantic. And now I can see all of the sites that fit those um, filters. So I see that there's one neon site 
the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute that is located in this domain that is terrestrial. There's, there might be an, an aquatic, aquatic site. So I'm going to, I want to learn more information about this site. I can click on the site name and it'll bring me to the site page where if I scroll down, I can see this map and you know, I, I'm, maybe I'm not familiar with NEON, so maybe this information doesn't really help me, but I can scroll down and see that the dominant, something called the L and L NLCD class, maybe I don't know what that is, but I do know what a deciduous or evergreen forest means. So this is a mix of deciduous trees and, and that, uh, you know, lose their leaves in the winter, uh, but there's also some evergreen trees there that are, that hold on to their leaves like pine, pine trees. I can also read about the site history, the vegetation itself, you know, kind of the, even the geology, I don't understand any of the, maybe I understand what this is, but I don't know what that is. And that's okay. If there's information that you don't recognize, that's okay. Um, dominant species, mean canopy height, that's the height of the trees. And other site-specific stuff. Um, yeah, so now, you know, I'm reading through. I can see some images. Oh, that's nice. I get a feel for what that site is like. I say, yeah, I'm interested in working with this site. So yeah, this this looks like a site I'm interested in. So what you want to do is write down that four letter site code. That's what we want. In this case, it's SCBI. All right, so you found a site that looks interesting. You've got your um, site code. You know what kind of organism you're interested in working with. Now we're ready to dive into the data portal. We can do that by selecting this option from the very top of the page, data portal. And you know, we have a few options. You work with data, data quality, but we want to explore data products. So we're going to select this first box. Okay. Now what we're we're looking at. Um, a way to filter all of the data. And the goal is to, you know, filter as much specifics as possible so we don't have to scroll through all these different data products. So we want to select that we were interested in data that's available. And in my example, I'm, I'm a terrestrial person, so I'm going to uh, select the terrestrial observation system. The terrestrial observation system includes all the organisms and soils, leaf nutrients, whereas the terrestrial instrument is more of those atmospheric uh, variables. Aquatic observation system will be those organisms as well as like water quality. And then aquatic instruments, I'm, I'm maybe that's the, you know, pH of the water and, all right. And I'm interested in mid-Atlantic, so I'll select that even though I, I don't think that does much. And I'll select the organisms, populations, and communities. This is important because it'll, it'll only show us those organisms that we're interested in all the organisms that are sampled. All right, so now you can see, you know, from these, from 181 total data products available, we filtered it down to 24 products. So that's more, a lot more manageable to scroll through. And we can see 
all the different data products as well as a short description. So, you know, take some time to read through breeding land birds. So count distance and what species they are for breeding land birds at these different, um, different surveys. Coarse down woody log, ground beetles, litter fall, woody debris, mosquito sequences, mosquito borne pathogens. Says maybe those, right? There's a lot of uh, data products that we're not going to be working with, but you can see what's available. And I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. There's the root sampling small mammal box trappings or if you're interested in small mo mammals there's your data product we probably won't be working with dna barcodes so all microbes i'm scrolling if you're interested in ticks this is the data product you'll be using and i've got the last one is woody plant vegetation structure so that's what i'm interested in I can view what data is available from the site tab. All right, so in some sites, there's more sampling than in others. That may be because the summer is longer. And I'm interested in that SCBI site, so I can, I see that there is data available for woody plant vegetation from SCBI right, indicated by the blue. So blue is available and gray is no data. SCBI. And if you want to wait, so, okay, let me, all right. So what we need from this exercise, right, is this code here. This is our data product code. In addition to the four letter site code, we want to identify the data product code. So all data products start with this DP and then a bunch of numbers. So I'm going to copy that and write it down so uh, uh, and save it because we'll need it later on. It's a few other things I want to point out. If you scroll all the way to the top, you'll see all of the products that are available and you can download this as a CSV like we learned about a comma separated value or a PDF and you know you can see all the data products 2D wind speed all these um, things that are measured you know, something called albedo. Don't worry if you don't recognize that. There's a lot of things in here that I don't recognize and it, you know, it takes me a minute, minute to understand what, what it is, but it, it gives you the description. And uh, so it's good to look at this PDF quickly, but I find it a little overwhelming because there are so many variables and there's some that I don't even recognize. So it's good to know that, you know, where to find this information, but I prefer the, oh no, what did I do? I prefer this um, kind of data portal because I find it easier uh, to kind of explore the data and see what, what sites are, have the available data. Once you found a data product, copy that data product code. And in a few weeks, we'll download the data in R using this, these codes, the four letter site code and this string of the data product code. All right, nice job working through this tutorial. You're halfway through the assignment if you've got those codes. Work through the rest of the assignment and complete this week's discussion. I'm excited to hear what data products and sites you end up choosing.